All right, we're looking at finding the molar mass of an unknown gas. Okay. So the reason we do this, as always, it's something we can do in a lab to get a little more information about a gas. We're going to go right through that, though. Um, so in lab, it's pretty easy to collect a gas. Like if you're, you have a reaction that's going to produce a gas, it's pretty easy to collect the gas and get the mass of that gas that you've collected. So that's your grams. And molar masses are always going to be, you know, how many grams per mole do you have? Well, this thing is easy. You get the grams from just massing it. And then the moles, we can find out moles of gas that you collect because it's pretty easy for us to measure the volume. Um, it's pretty easy to look and see on a barometer the pressure. Um, we know the gas constant, it's pretty easy to use the thermometer and get the temperature. And we know PV equals NRT. When you rearrange that, that means your number of moles is equal to the pressure that that gas was collected at, the volume of gas divided by the gas constant and the temperature. So um, this is one way that we can actually learn a little bit about a gas that is unknown, and then we can help to identify that gas. Well, at least we know the molar mass, so we can narrow down what it might be. So here's an example. You find that 0.1 grams of a compound exerts a pressure of um, 70.5 millimeters mercury in a volume, or a 256 milliliter container, at 22.3 degrees Celsius. What is the molar mass of the compound? Okay, so I'm looking for molar mass. One thing I like to do is ask myself, what units do I need for what I'm looking for? I need grams per mole. Okay, how do I find grams? That's easy. They're here. I found them. Okay, then the next part, let's see, I've got this number. Um, millimeters mercury is what a barometer uses, so that is a pressure. Um, I've got 256 milliliters, that is a volume. I have 22.3 degrees Celsius, that is a temperature. All right, so I don't have moles here, but I do have P, V, and T. So I can use PV equals NRT. All right, I'm gonna rearrange because I'm solving for the moles, and that way I can just plug this into here. I know that I'm gonna wanna take the grams that I have, 0 0.100, and divide by however many moles of gas this is. Okay, so I'm solving for moles. Let's go ahead and get the moles alone. So divide by RT on both sides. R divided by R is one, T divided by T, okay. So the N is going to equal the pressure times the volume divided by the gas constant, 0 0.0821 liters, atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and times temperature. But I didn't give you any of the units correctly, so we have to do some conversions. So we have, for pressure, um, 70 point five millimeters mercury. And you can look in your handy sheet you get for every test. There are 760 millimeters mercury for every one atmosphere. You plug that in and you end up getting, I have zero point, uh, where is it? I have it, okay, 0 0.0928 atms. That's how many atmospheres. So I can plug that in for my pressure. 0 0.0928 atmospheres, okay? My volume, I gave you milliliters, we need liters. It's the beginning of the year. We'll, we'll show this conversion. 256 milliliters, and for every 1,000 milliliters, 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 there's one liter, okay? So I'm dividing by 1,000. That's 0 0.256 liters, 0 0.256 liters, that's my volume. And let's see, so those units are right so far, and I'm gonna need Kelvin for the temperature. Oh, what I just did is I know my units have to match whatever units I use in my R constant. So I have to use liters, I have to use atmospheres, I have to use, I have to use Kelvin. Um, so 22.3, 0.3 Celsius plus, I add 273 to that. I don't know if we need to be as picky as 273.15. I don't think that's anywhere on the sheet. And if it is, I'll be pickier. But 
I don't see it. So on an AP problem, they'd tell us, I think, they want us to be to have the 273.15. Okay, so I can just add this guy. I have 295.3 Kelvin. Okay, so 295.3 Kelvin. All right, so all my units cancel out, and I enjoy that so much that I'm going to go ahead and cancel them out. Okay, divide by each other, and it equals 1. Math teachers hate when you say cancel out, because it really is. You're dividing something by itself that equals 1. There's no reason to write it. All right, so then I have, I multiply these, divide by that, and when you type this in to your calculadora, you should get 0 0.00. <laughs> Nine seven nine five. I don't know why I didn't use um, scientific notation. So, aka nine point seven nine five times ten to the negative four, right? Negative fourth moles. So I have this many grams per mole. When you type that in, what you end up getting? I'm gonna make some space for myself. Type that in, and you're going to get um, 102.0918 grams per mole. Let's look at sig figs. Um, there's three everywhere. So let's put in three. 102 grams per mole. Lovely. Okay, so let's look at one more problem that's dealing with about the same thing. So the whole molar mass is looking at how many grams per mole. Um, so we get that using the ideal gas law because we can figure out moles for given grams. We can also look at density because we can look at how much, you know, when we're looking at density, the units for density are gonna be, well, you're looking at mass per volume is density. So some common units for that could be grams. We use grams a lot. Some people might not think they're worth much. And we have liters. Okay, so let's see. What would be the density of oxygen gas at STP, standard temperature and pressure? So, um, I, I know that if I have constant temperature and pressure, if they're not changing, then my ratio of moles per liter isn't gonna change either. And the way I know that is that if I double the volume of a gas, but I don't change the temper, temperature, yeah, temperature or pressure, if I double the moles, I have to double the volume to keep the pressure the same. So that ratio of moles to liters, because the moles will dictate this, moles per liter will be constant. I can pick any mole amount I want. Such freedom. So I will choose one, one mole. I know one mole of oxygen weighs 32 grams because oxygen is O2, and oxygen is 16 grams per mole. So one mole of O2 is gonna give me 32 grams. So one mole of O2 equals 32 grams. All right, so I've got 32 grams here. Now I need to find out what the volume of that would be. So I have temperature, I have pressure, I have moles. I can use PV equals MRT. There's a shortcut you'll see in a second. You can use it instead. Um, so I'm looking for volume. I'll get volume by itself. Oops, sorry. I'll get volume by itself. So divide both sides by pressure. Okay, so the volume is going to be the number of moles, one mole, times the gas constant, 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin um, times the temperature. Standard temperature is zero Celsius, so 273 Kelvin, over pressure, standard pressure. So that's going to be one atmosphere. And I plug that in, and when I type that in, it turns out that it is 22.4, Just to, I'm going to round at the very end. It's always good to round at the end to your sig figs. So I have 32 grams in 22.4133 liters. And when you type that in, 32 divided by 22.4133, to get a gram per liter amount, you're gonna get 1.4277 uh, grams per liter. 
Let's look at sig figs. Oh, this actually, um, on my sheet, on the sheet I get to use, it says that it's 0 0.000. So it has several sig figs. That pressure has four sig figs. Um, this guy is 32.00, so it's got four sig figs. Um, where did I round? I rounded somewhere. You know what? I only used three sig figs on my temperature. And I only used three sig figs on the scouts constant. So I could have been more specific, but I only used three sig figs. So I'm going to have to fess up and just say 1.43 grams per liter. Okay, so that's the density. That's my mass per volume of oxygen gas, that many grams for every one liter. The shortcut was that when you have one mole of gas at STP, it occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. It's something we just can memorize and that'll save us steps. So I could have just said 32 grams divided by 22.4 and got my answer. And if you remember, that one mole of gas occupies 22.4 liters at standard temperature and pressure, you get to use that shortcut. It's not on your sheet though.